Well, this goes out to uh, all of our friends in the sunny southwest, in Florida, uh, those of us working stiffs that are still trapped here in the northern climes, basically in for the winter, doing maintenance, waiting for springtime, and uh, we just wanted to let you know that we're not at all jealous. Uh, Y'all have fun, stay warm, and uh, Claire Marsh will be back on the road here in about a month or so. See y'all later. Hey guys, I'm Warren. I'm Maureen. And we are RV there yet. We're here in beautiful North Carolina in the middle of February. And as you can see, for once it's not snowing, it's not raining. So this is a, a great weekend for us to try to catch up on some much needed maintenance and to knock out some uh, repairs and honeydews to get ready to hit the road in the spring. Uh, we have some trips planned in uh, March. We have rallies. We have several places we'll be sharing with you some uh, harvest host locations. So hopefully you'll hit the subscribe button down below and uh, also the bells will be notified of any new videos. So hope you enjoy it and welcome to our channel. Okay, so one of the first items that we added to the rig for this year is a Thule bike rack for Maureen's e-bike. Uh, I'll show you how it folds down and uh, puts the bike on and here's what it looks like when it's down all right this is what it looks like down yeah so we installed a front receiver hitch on the front of the truck that allows us to uh, carry a bike rack that would normally go on the rear of your vehicle on the front and still tow the travel trail okay so here's the uh, bike Maureen's pink <laughs> pink e-bike from electricbicycle.com uh, on the rack ready to hit the road and I think it's a great addition to us and she really enjoys uh, getting around the campground on her little pink sickle. We added this ARE truck cap and it has toolboxes on both sides and what's really handy about that is it allows me to put the items in each toolbox that correspond to how I use those things at the campground. So for example, on the driver's side, we have our dog bone adapters. All the electrical and water sewer things are on this side. We have a creeper mat for getting underneath the truck if I need to. We have one set of uh, chocks and leveling blocks. We have our water fill hose, our backup camera. You know what these are for, Maureen? Yep. <laughs> Maureen's the, the dumping, dumping queen. Okay, have our water hose. Uh, excuse me, water hose and uh, electric cord. And then back at the back, we have an additional length of water hose. Uh, what's not in this picture, which is actually in a different location, is the macerator. We use a, a macerator for the sewer hookup instead of having to carry the, the great big uh, sewer hose. It saves us a lot of space. So when we added the ARE truck cap, we also added a cargo glide. And this cargo glide will hold a thousand pounds of cargo. And it gives you quite a lot of storage. And although I can't carry everything I want to carry all at one time, we basically have, going back to Navy terms, mission packages. So for example, I can pull this cargo tray out and it greatly eases the ability to, to load. And I have different configurations that I use depending on where we're going and what we're going to be doing. So for example, here on the end, we have a jerry can holder. Use that to hold gasoline for our two Yamaha generators that normally sit here on the, the rear of this bed slide when we're going to be needing the generators. I do have a folding recumbent bike, recumbent trike, excuse me, It'll fit up in the nose. We have various different bins for different things like this one here is for the outdoor cooking, Dutch ovens, that sort of thing, depending on where we're going and what we're going to be doing. But this uh, cargo tray really helps make it a lot easier to load and unload. And one of the big benefits of the dually is we really don't have to worry very much about how much cargo we put in the back because the, the airstream is really 
a minimal load for this truck and it gives us a lot of flexibility in what we can carry. So the passenger side toolbox again is set up for the things that I don't need on the uh, street side of the camper, things I would need on the curb side. So here we have towing straps, we have all electrical uh, strippers, fuses, batteries, all that sort of stuff, a whole bin of different electrical connectors, uh, road flares, and since we're air streamers, we have a whole bunch of flags for when we do rallies and that sort of thing, and a set of fold up chairs. So, in summary, we really like this setup. It's great for mountains, state parks, national parks, that sort of thing. Coming off of a mountain, we do have an engine brake built into the truck. So we very rarely have to use the uh, truck brakes at all. And we have a tremendous amount of cargo carrying capacity. So it's a wonderful combination between the Airstream, light, low to the ground, low center of gravity, and our tow vehicle. The rounded aerodynamic shape of an Airstream is really a double-edged sword. I've never had a camper that has better road manners than the Airstream. It has a very low center of gravity. It's aerodynamic. Toes like an absolute dream. The trade-off, and everything in an RV is a trade-off, the trade-off is that your cabinets on the inside are about a third smaller, the upper cabinets, than you would if you had a square side, than you would have if you had a square-sided camper. And the other one, which I'll show you when you get on the inside, is that your blinds are on a slanted sidewall, not a squared sidewall. So if they're not uh, connected at the bottom, they tend to hang away from the uh, sidewall of the camper. And we're taking the balance off. This blind is foobarred. Here's the blind. If you're not familiar with these, it's, a, it's two blinds actually. There's a, a day night shade, there's a, a night privacy shade, and a day shade. And El Mayor's one of the strings broken. So we're going to take this thing apart and, uh, and restring it. If you have an airstream, uh, one of the most helpful things uh, you can do is use airforums.com. Uh, the Airstream community is, is very large and a lot of very experienced folks. And one thing we found here, we were contemplating taking this whole balance off and then uh, taking the blind down. And then we read that the blind is in fact, and I'll show you a, a shot in a second, the blind is actually in a set of clips and it'll just pop right out. We can restring it and pop it back in without having to take this balance off. You can see the blind is actually held in place. It's in a channel. And there are these little retaining clips. We pop it out of that uh, retaining clip and we take the whole blind out without removing the valve. Okay, so the blind's out. You can see the little clips. There's one on that side and there's one on this side. And it just pops right out. And it saves you a ton of time because you don't have to worry about taking the valance or anything else loose. Okay, we have gotten the blind out from the RV and got it laid out on the table. We're going to use this pleated shade first aid kit um, from United Shade. It's got a good bit of string, the um, end pieces that go here at that came from the wall, and then a couple of springs um, that are coming from the top. And I've got paper to diagram how the strings are going to be threaded through and how they'll cross um, when we start to take apart the blind. All right, so you can see the whole blind here now. The spring and the string at the top comes down on both sides, goes to this shade, crosses over, down to the bottom, crosses over again. Maureen has drawn her diagram so we know how to string it when we go back together. And now, my dear, my job is done. 
I'm in charge of dismantling and you <laughs> are in charge of mantling. All right. We're each trying to keep up with each pleat. I'm gonna let him get ahead. <laughs> but we're we're going down and putting the stri new string through each of the holes till we get to the end. But I should beat him. But in the meantime, <laughs> he's stopping to keep me in. <laughs> okay, so we're ready to do the reinstallation. And if you look at the top of the bond, you can see a groove here. That engages, if you can see these little brackets up in here, there's a lip. There's one there, there's one there. We'll put that in the, the groove and then just rotate the blind back into place. And that should be it. Once you've snapped the uh, upper rail back into the brackets, then it's just a matter of properly tensioning these two strings, one on either side. And then at that point, your blind is back into operation. And we're ready to go camping. Yay! Yay!